Hello and welcome to Monday, April the 11th. Our topic today is spiritual guidance. Now we talked about being uh, exploring the claims of Christ and what it takes to make our journey all the way through the hardship and everything that comes in the world. And the two points that I made this morning were, one, we have the Word of God, and the other is we have the Spirit of God in our life. Now I want to read uh, the passage from 1 Corinthians 2, starting in verse 9 and going through verse 16. So listen to this. It says, uh, You, however, as it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love Him. In other words, whatever God's prepared for you, it's bigger than you can conceive of. That's His purpose. That's His plan. Now, we won't necessarily get there if we're not willing to follow, to walk, to let the Spirit lead us. But His plans are bigger than our plans. His purpose, bigger than ours. He wants for us better than we could even want for ourselves. And he goes on, but God is revealed it to us by his spirit. In other words, his spirit is going to make known to us that there's something bigger than what we tend to settle for. And then he goes on, the spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. And then this is an important, uh, important verse. Listen to this. For who among men knows the thoughts of a man except for the man's spirit within him. In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except for the spirit of God. In other words, you may know a lot about me. My wife may know so much about me. We've done almost 30 years of life together, and yet she can't truly know me. Only my spirit that dwells within me. You know, I saw a, an interesting thing on the show, To Tell the Truth. They actually had Jim Backus, who was the voice of Mr. Magoo, and then two other mimics. One of them was Rich Little. Now, here's what's interesting. All three of those individuals talk like Mr. Magoo. Jim Backus, the actual voice of Mr. Magoo, and the other two mimics, one of which was Rich Little. Now, when the people were blindfolded and listened to the voices, they had to choose Mr. Magoo. And all three of the people that were blindfolded chose Rich Little. Rich Little actually did a better Mr. Magoo than Jim Backus, the actual guy that did Mr. Magoo. What happened was he actually gave even a little more punch on the inflection. He was a little more animated, and he won them over. But here's the thing. He may be able to impersonate Magoo, but he hasn't got a clue what's going on in Jim Backus's head. He may do a better impersonation of his voice, so much so that he fools three blindfolded people, but he has no clue what's going on in Jim Backus's head. You know, for the longest time, I thought what we were supposed to do was to mimic or parrot God. We were supposed to look at Jesus' uh, examples and then do what he did. But the more I looked at what he did and how he lived and where he went and what he said and who he spoke to and how he addressed them, the more I became overwhelmed thinking, I can't even do a decent impersonation of Jesus. What hope do I have of actually doing the things that Jesus did. It's crazy. And yet, let's read on. This is what we speak, not in words taught us by human wisdom, but words taught by the Spirit, expressing spiritual truths in spiritual words. For the man without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from God. Uh... From the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Now the spiritual man makes judgments about all things, but he himself is not subject to any man's judgment. Important verse, listen. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of of Christ. Now you hear his statement. He said, no one can know what's really going on inside me except for my own spirit. And yet God has given us his spirit that we can know truly the leadership and the thoughts of God. He said, no one can know a person 
truly except the spirit that's within him and we have not received a spirit of the world but the spirit that is from God that we may have the actual mind of Christ. That's the reason Jesus said, you're gonna do even greater things than I do because I go to the Father and I send my spirit to empower you. Now this is pretty powerful. What he's saying is we have access to his spirit. We have the ability to know how to respond, what to do. The deep thoughts of God are available to us because he has given us his spirit. And all of us hear from the Lord. I tell people all the time, a lot lot of people go, I don't know that I ever hear the voice of God. I don't know what's going on. And, And this is my litmus test for showing you that you already hear from the voice of God. If you ever sit in the service on Sunday morning, and I have people say this to me over and over and over and over again. They say, Pastor John, when you're speaking... When you're speaking, it sounds like you're speaking directly to me. It's like you sat in my living room all week long. It's just like you're just nailing right there. And then they tell me the things that I said that nailed them right there. And guess what? I know that I've never said that. I've never spoken those words. Because see, what happens is when I'm speaking on Sunday morning or when I'm teaching or when someone else is teaching, there's not just, they're not just hearing my voice. There's also the thought process that's running. And the Spirit of God invades those opportunities and speaks what we directly need to hear. Because the one that spent all week in their living room wasn't me. It was the presence of the Spirit of God. And as I'm speaking, the Holy Spirit is also speaking. So whenever someone comes up and says to me, oh, it's just like you were speaking directly to me. It's like you sat in my living room. And then they tell me something that I know good and well I've never said. I know who said it. It's the Spirit of God. You see, every one of us have access to that. We're all hearing the voice of God when we're open when we're receptive. And quite honestly, for most people, their most receptive is when they're listening to someone speak. and They're allowing that word, that truth, that teaching to begin to resonate in their spirit. And the Holy Spirit seizes that opportunity to speak directly into their lives. But the reality is we can have that every day. If we'll do these devotions and then during the prayer time or in a reflection time, really go, okay, God, how does that apply to me? In fact, Even as I'm sharing this right now, you're probably hearing more than just my voice. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you. He wants you to place it directly in the center of your life, to know that you are going to be able to have the mind of Christ. And he'll lead you and guide you. He said that he would be a lamp to our feet, a light to our path, and that if we hide his word in our heart, we won't sin against him. He's there to lead us. So let's pray. Father, I thank you that you are more than able to do the work that we need. Father, I thank you that you gave your life so that we could have access to the actual indwelling presence of your Holy Spirit. And so, Father, we just thank you that you made that incredible opportunity available to us. Now, Lord, we want to capitalize on it. We want to hear your voice. We want to walk and move at the impulse of your hand. Father, I ask that you would, in a greater way, begin to speak through the work of your Holy Spirit directly into our lives. Father, as we listen to these devotions, as we listen to messages, as we read the scriptures, as we spend time praying and reflecting, that, Lord, you will invade our thoughts and that you will give us the wisdom, the knowledge, the strength, the direction that we need in our lives. And Father, I thank you that you are active in every one of our lives when we look to you to lead us and guide us. So Father, we just by faith begin to grab hold of that which you already provided for us, the work of the Holy Spirit in our life, the mind of Christ that is available to us. And we ask that you would just continue to grow us in sensitivity to it. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, guys, he is speaking. And I know at those sensitive moments, at those quiet moments, you are hearing, even if you're not so aware of just that audible voice just yet. But here's what I want you to do. Continue to capture every thought. When you have those thoughts, when I'm sharing and all of a sudden that insight comes, take that as the work of the Holy Spirit. Let it gain root. Meditate on it. Think on it. Turn it over in your spirit. 
and see if it doesn't become an incredible leadership in your life. Jesus came so that you could have the mind of Christ. It's pretty incredible. Well, guys, we'll be back tomorrow looking at another key to be able to be great explorers of the life of God. See you tomorrow. Lord bless you.